Zoom conversations with Tony Brown. I'm here, Kiki, and with my good girlfriend, Miss Sydney Kimbrough. Um, girl, it is a pleasure to have you on the new and improved show. It's always wonderful to be with you. Yes. Well, I brought you up here for a reason because I want you to let the children know what what is attraction from a um, te- first. Let's first talk about a little bit of your background in education and the type of work that you do. Okay. And then that's what we're going to go into. Okay, so, you know, I've, I've done a lot of work in advocacy and community mm-hmm. development around, particularly, particularly around um, sexuality okay. um, and uh, working in the public health field. So you kind of get the feel for a lot of this stuff really early. I got the feel for it very early. Mm-hmm. My background is in counseling, rehabilitation counseling, and okay. you know, psychology. So you, you get to look at it from, not only from my personal view, but I get to look at it from a clinical eye as well. It's mm-hmm. helped me quite a bit in my development. So I try to share it with other people. Well, I know it's been helpful to me. Uh, We've been friends for so many years. And I know in my early transition, trying to understand not only what I was going through, and you were pivotal in that, but also trying to understand you know, what it was like for someone who was attracted to me. And I think that is imperative for any young trans person or any person in general who is trying to understand this whole trans conversation. Um, And so let's dig into that. What is it? What is attraction? What what are we as people attracted to? Okay, so we like to say it's Secondary sexual characteristics are the things we're attracted to. So most people think that we're attracted to genitals. If you ask the average person, well, what makes you attracted to someone? They'll say something about um, someone's physical appearance, which is partly true because we are we're primarily attracted physically, okay. but it's not genitals. And that's in this conversation, particularly around trans conversations or conversations around gender identity, people get lost in the genitalia conversation. Oh God, don't. They? And mm-hmm. genitals have only one purpose for all of us, whether it be trans or cis people. It's the propagation of the species. So if you take away the penis and the vagina, you, what do you have left? Oh. And those are the characteristics that many of us are attracted to. Ah, oh, wait a minute. You can't, you can't spit that sort of thing. <laughs> we Let's rewind that. So okay. if we take away the business, if as my girlfriend loves to right. say. Take away that. Take away that. Right. What else do we have what left? What else do you have left? Okay. And so what, what, what do people say when you say that to them? Well, it, it really handicaps a lot of people because we are a culture, unfortunately, a culture of people who believe that our, our sexuality and that our attraction and our orientation even is based on uh, genitalia. And it's mm. like when you meet a person on the street, you don't see their genitals. That's right. You know, that happens to be the genitals that you may like to play with intimately. Okay. But that is just a means to an end for procreation and for sexual pleasure. Mm. But it still doesn't say anything about the attraction itself. And right. That is the thing that's like, well, like, relationships. And, and that's one of the things that the trans movement has been trying so hard to get people to understand, right. you know, focusing above the waist. Right. And at the whole entire person. So I I think that's really, you know, as Oprah says, that aha moment to realize, wait a minute, if if I'm just walking down the street, I don't know what the business is. That's true. You can hope, you can try, you can try to to imagine, Mm -hmm. but in all fairness, it's not something that only trans people do. I see a lot of of cisgender people, cisgender Mm -hmm. relationships, because you have a lot of relationships. I'm pretty sure all of us know someone who has been in a relationship or a guy who has several different baby mamas or a woman who has several different baby daddies and they get together and they have these children. So at some point they got along. It's usually around the genitalia issue that Mm -hmm. they wanted to have sex. But later they discover after sex is gone, Mm. that the person, the attraction wasn't there because I don't know who you are. I don't like you. So therefore, it's fleeting. Mm. And it's something that plays out in a lot of relationships. But in trans relationships, it tends to be the centric thing because when you say, unfortunately, in our culture, when we say trans, most people tend to go to sex because that's, again, that's what most people understand about themselves. Mm. So, of course, they project it on other people. Oh, my. Girl, you are just you, you're it's letting a, us have it. It's a but, you, but she, you have to slow it down okay. for my for my All folks right. out. All right, you know. So let let's let's first talk about what are the secondary? Did you say sexual characteristics? Secondary sexual characteristics. What are those? So the things that would be secondary sexual characteristics are things that you would be attracted to when you okay. see someone. Um, it would be 
um, if you're for a man, a woman who's attracted to a man or anybody who's attracted to a man, it's the way he walks, the way he talks, the way he interacts with the world, the mm -hmm. way the world interacts mm -hmm. with him, the way he feels, the way he thinks. Mm -hmm. um, it's all of those abstract things that we know are there okay. that are not tangible, but we know that they're there and we get responses from. Mm -hmm. Same thing with a woman. It's her, the way that she feels, the way she thinks, the way she interacts, the way she walks, she talks, she thinks. The thing that it's that thing that, so it feels fleeting, but it's very grounded in our emotions. It's very grounded in our in our psychological selves. Mm. It's one of those things. It's, so you're saying it's uh, just for me as a layman person, you're saying that's a, a subconscious thing. It's not something that we think about as much. It is, it's greatly grounded, rooted in subconscious. Okay. Here's an example. Men, I often have, we have the conversation, we've had a lot of times, about men who are attracted to trans women and who may not have known a woman was trans and that what we call it, and what it's called in psychology, is dissonance, is that the, what you believe and what your mind is giving you. Mm -hmm. And they have this, this intersection that happens. Mm -hmm. So these, the... When you're talking about attraction, the problem that this happening and what's acting out in a man's mind is, I know, I've just told myself or I've just gotten awareness that this person in their mind is a man. Right, right. What they really mean is a male-bodied person. That's right, right. But your psychology, your brain only responds to what you are attracted to. So if you are attracted to femininity, if you're attracted to womanhood, and this person, male-bodied or not, has the characteristics of what you are attracted to, your mm. brain will respond to it. Oh, and, and will bring you see. and will give you that and, attraction. And in the same, in same in turn, mm -hmm. if if you meet a a, a a man of trans experience, absolutely, you know, and, and we've talked about that before. You know, I've been very open about having so many trans male mm -hmm. friends, and 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 I don't see them as anything but men. You have that to I just, just, you know, that that that's just who we are right. as trans people, and and I'm attracted to you, right? You know. And, and so having to process just what you just said and, and understand it mm -hmm. is what I is my goal in having this mm -hmm. conversation with you. People struggle with that. You know, I remember we had a event at Wheaton Park. Mm -hmm. We called it a trans barbecue. Mm -hmm. And um, my, my good friend, Renee, who's going to be coming on the show, she said, look, I really want this to happen. So we got everyone together, but we didn't know who was what. Okay, we really didn't. We didn't know As who was going to come. You right. You, we didn't know who was going to come. Um, and we we're thinking it was going to be about 15 minutes mm -hmm. or so. And I mean, 15 people, I'm sorry. And next thing we know, it was like 50 people. Mm -hmm. We didn't know who was trans right. or not, right. which not that it matters. Right. But we just did it, and they were coming up. And some people, we were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. And so some of the ladies there, and this is why I'm bringing you on the show, some of the ladies there felt some kind of way because these men were looking so good, and they wanted to process that. Mm -hmm. You know, well, how is it that I'm so attracted to these these men, right? You know, because that dissonance uh -huh. that you're talking about. Ah, that's really it interesting. It makes people really think. The thing I love about the trans conversation is that it really makes people think if they are, if they're brave enough to have the conversation, mm -hmm. even within themselves. Okay. It makes people to really think about what attraction really is. It really does. Now that I know that this person may not have the genitals that I am used to playing with. I'm using that. that right, that's okay. Hey, hey, that hey, is, those to are the genitals that we're around. used to engaging with. We're used to being intimate with. But yet I'm still attracted. Mm -hmm. So that means that first, sex is not the thing that I'm attracted to. Oh! That's, that's the first thing. What? And then, mm -hmm. all right, so now. what? Mm -hmm. So what am I attracted to? And it forces you. Because now you know the thing that you always thought you were attracted to is no longer on the table. Mm. Again, taking That's away the genitals. Right. Now what? Mm. Mm. And it causes a chain reaction Same. of a couple of things to happen. Who is this person now that I'm attracted to? What does that mean? What does that mean for me? Yes. Who now am I? Am I the same person I was yesterday? Mm -hmm. And 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 is that play a role in some of the violence that we see? That dissonance, mm -hmm. trying to figure mm -hmm. that out. Mm -hmm. Could you explain? Absolutely. That, what, that reaction. You know, in, in nature, mm -hmm. it's it's a it's a well documented thing that whenever uh, any species is threatened, it tries to extinguish something that threatens it. Mm -hmm. It defends itself against something that threatens its its existence. Mm -hmm. So when you have someone 
who is attracted to a trans person unknowingly, and then they discover that they are, they, they internalize it based on what they've been taught, not what their nature is saying. Their nature is only doing what their nature does, is respond to That's the statement of attraction, right? right. Mm -hmm. But what they've been taught, they're trying to override, overthink their nature. Mm. And so they're trying to extinguish this thing that we've been taught that this is something that's going to harm you. Mm. When it really isn't. It's just something else that you just didn't know that you were attracted to. Had, right. had an experience. Yeah, it's just isn't another that? type of thing that you're attracted to. Wow, and plus of the demonization. Absolutely. And all, all that kind of stuff things. and all mm. that other all stuff. But just based off of what you're saying about those characteristics, you know, it, it, it is a phenomenal thing. I think that's why I love meeting so many trans people. I think that we are... Um, very blessed to be trans. I don't That's feel right. any other way. And you know, I, I felt do. that way for a long time because, it's the, I, you know, for years we would go back and forth about different stories and those stories would be about that uh -huh. dissonance. It Same would be things. about this man yeah. will not leave me alone, will not leave me alone. And then when you finally get with them, how they, they get there, everything was well, and then they're gone. They're gone. They disappear. Boom. Because they have to go away and process. Okay. Right. right. Oftentimes it's, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. I jump off and that the, the adrenaline, if you will, will make them jump off, make them do the thing. And then afterwards, they have to run and go process that. Mm. And oftentimes it could be a day, it could be a week, it could be a year, it could be two years. So is that a natural progression depending on the individual? Um, do you think it's natural or do you think that's a form of denial? What do you think, I think that it's might a little be? Bit of, of a, I think it's a few things. I think it's natural for, depending on what your level of, of understanding of yourself in the world is. Okay. Um, what your intellect level is, how much you can handle. Mm -hmm. Your environment. I, your maybe. environment, of course, definitely environment. I think how much you can process psychologically. You gotta remember, when you're talking about these types of issues, sexuality is so fundamental mm -hmm. to what we all do mm -hmm. that when you try to make moves Moves to it, it shifts everything. Look at it as a pie chart. Okay. If you and I had a pie, a pie, and we split it in half, so you're gonna take half and I'm gonna take half. Okay, I got half of my pie. Half of my pie. And you got you got half, I got half. Mm -hmm. And I walk away, and while I'm walking away, you're going, wait a minute, I deserve more of this pie. It's my show. I should have three quarters of the pie. Okay. Okay. So now you come to me and you assert to me, I should have three quarters of the pie. Okay. But what does that say to me? That's mm -hmm. also saying that I deserve less than half. Mm -hmm. So it changes your value. Mm -hmm. It shifts the value. So whenever you have a situation like that, people don't realize that sexuality, whenever you change what we all have all agreed that sexuality is, mm -hmm. the moment you move it one way or another, it changes everyone who's involved their value oh. or what they assume their value is. And that's why there's such a visceral and reaction. that's exactly why. And they fight to keep what they have always known mm -hmm. because now it requires them to do something different. So let's now talk about the di sexuality and sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I've, you have helped me to explain it to men in the past. Um, in such a way that has been so grounded that it has been universal. Wow. So I feel that this is imperative for, for, for many people to okay. see. So how, tell me how you process all of this when it comes down to sexual orientation versus gender identity and, you know, sexuality. You know, how, how, how do you explain it? Say, for instance, you meet someone on the street mm -hmm. and you're trying to explain this to them. Mm -hmm. uh. I try not to for one. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But it, it, in that instance, I have had situations like many situations like that. Mm -hmm. um, first, I want to say is that I didn't, I didn't always understand it the way that I do. I'm okay. always, and I'm still learning right. so many different nuances because now right. it's the fine tuning of things. Okay. I only understand this now because first of all, I live it. Okay. And I lived in a world where people were always questioning who I was. I was always very clear about who I was internally. Yeah, we it all was were. everybody we else that had issues. Right. That's right, right. And when you have people who challenge you about who you are, they can challenge me about a lot of things, but the one thing that I was always very clear about is you will never be able to challenge me in my person. Yes. But in yes. order for me to defend it, I had to understand it. Mm. In order for me to understand me, though, I had to understand you. Mm, so I wait a minute, wait, see, see, I keep telling you, girl, <laughs> you keep spinning this knowledge <laughs> like it's right. nothing. Let's rewind yeah. because that is another issue that I have with a lot of um, 
my friends in general, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and not understanding the mental health aspect right. to this transition right. thing. It is, it is we huge. know who we are. It's huge. It's everyone else that's trying to figure it out. And that's why we have this discourse. Right. And, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons why I'm constantly telling a lot of my girlfriends, do you have someone that you talk to? Do you have a therapist? Do you have anyone that you can talk to? Should. Not about the fact that you don't know who you are, but the reactions right. of everyone else. Right. You know, exactly. I, and I tell my closest mm -hmm. friends, you know, there's a reason I don't watch a lot of things. I don't engage in a lot of stuff. Right. Even with social media, I'm very, very right. careful the energy that, that I bring in. in. Right. So tell us a little bit about that. So you, how can I start that? When you are um, dealing, I guess I'm kind of, I don't know which, which angle to, which angle to take it at. Any angle you want to. When you, when you are dealing with um, sexuality is so, it's so complex. Mm -hmm. it, it draws, it's very difficult for you to be able to understand it in a way as intimately as you need to without understanding other people. Okay. When you, everything that you do impacts all of us, everything that we do impacts each other. Okay. We all impact each other. Right. You have to understand the landscape before you can make a move. That would be a strategic thing in anything that you did. Mm -hmm. So you have to study and realize what's happening around you mm -hmm. and how people respond to you and how you respond to them. And then you start to get a clearer picture because this was, you have to remember, this is not something that there was a roadmap to. There's no blueprint for this. Mm -hmm. right. And the blueprint now is being laid. It's being made through these various experiences, con conversations, conversations and so on and so forth so that someone who was 10 or, or six years old today will not have to create the wheel the way that you and I may have had to yes, do that. Yes, Lord knows. So you have to listen to other people. And I started to study other people, see exactly how people interact with one another outside of me as a third person, just kind of like looking, mm -hmm. um, outside looking in. And what did you find? I found that there was so much misunderstanding, so much miscommunication, miscommunication so much uh, uh, in communication, if they were not even, you, you think that you're talking to someone, you think that you're communicating effectively with someone, but you're really talking around them, you're talking at them, you're talking beneath or below them, but never to them. Mm. And so with that, I learned, oh, so these people don't really understand themselves at all. And fear. And all of oh, them. Okay, fear. so let's, now, I know this is personal. But we used to tell different stories about some of our dating experiences. And I, I'll share mine, okay? So you don't have to. But there is sometimes this fear between trans person and cisgender person is real, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. And so sometimes when you're, say for instance, you are laying with a friend that you're, that's an intimate partner. And if they have a fear... Sometimes there are things that aren't really happening and they think is happening. For mm -hmm. instance, my mem did your member touch me? Do you remember? <laughs> so we called this, did your member touch me? There was a guy that I used to date years ago. Years ago. I don't know if he's going to see the God. stuff that I'm doing. He's probably melting. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, uh, we were just laying next to each other. But he had such a fear. Mm -hmm of, like you said, changing mm -hmm. something with his sexual. We were just laying there. There was mm -hmm. nothing going on. It wasn't even a sexual situation. And so the next day after we fell asleep, he says to me, did you remember touch me? <laughs> and so, I still can't with that conversation. Every time I hear it, it's hilarious. I said, well, what are you talking about? So he said, did you, he said, you know, when a woman hugs me, I, you know, I, I felt your boob, I, fe I, I felt your legs, and I think your member touched me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Now, even in that, he could not say 
He didn't know what to call it. Right. He didn't have any particular names because men who were date trans women wow. who are or not, not <laughs> they often have names for for penis for on a woman. Maybe they may call clitoris or some other name. He couldn't even get there. He just knew that it was a member. He let it let it be very biological, very scientific, very abstract away from me because that's where he was. Right. Right. And he was trying. I I believe in that instance, and we, we talked about that you know several times. Mm -hmm. Every time I think about it, I try to sort through what he was going through. Because because the entire time there, that wasn't just the first time that it that he had been thinking about that the whole oh, time no. and mm -hmm. anticipating mm -hmm. it even. Yeah, right. oh! even mm -hmm. anticipating it. So, but they don't think that we know that. <laughs> yeah, they don't think that we know that. Exactly. And the thing about it was not to be graphic or anything, but that wasn't even a that wasn't even it. That wasn't a part. You know, of it wasn't evening. a part of the evening right. and my undergarments. That was just right. not a possibility. Right. So it was so hilarious because it wasn't hilarious in the sense of clowning this man. It's it's sharing these sort of things. How deep it runs. How deep it runs. And this is someone who chased me down. I don't yeah. chase down men. I they don't. I, you. And you know that. I don't. These men are pursuing me. I'm a public figure. I perform. I'm traveling. This is someone I met in my travels who begged to see me. Knew, of course, because I'm out. Mm -hmm. Have been out for over ten plus some odd years or whatever. But your your status in in, in life and in community made you a safe bet. Mm. It was safe to be with this woman because he'd already thought this through he wanted to be with a trans woman that was that that was we way know. before he had oh, right he had already anticipated what it'd be like to have a member touch him isn't mm -hmm. that deep oh absolutely that is really deep but he needed to find somebody where he would be safe in order to do that with or even to say that way yeah. because that's not something he could have said to anybody that's right, right so it was something that he had worked himself up to and you were the safe place to be with he was, right, and, right. and i think that's a blessing for him because it, it, even as Odd as the moment was, it helped him work through some things. He did get to another stage we'd never been to. Before. Well, you know, another thing that you helped me with is being more gentle in my approach <laughs> to situations <laughs> like that because I would snap off, you know, when I was in my younger days. Right. And, and, not and sometimes it warrants snapping off. Of course, of course. But I think that we do as women have to learn when someone is being shady and when someone is just being just genuine. genuine. He and he just, he was being genuine. Right. He he was really being genuine. And not to victimize men when they are genuine, particularly if they like a woman who happens to be trans. I think on too, on too often we see we will victimize a man who has no problem with us, whether there's an issue around mm -hmm. anatomy or identity or, you know, how we look, if we're not right, 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 so on and so forth. So we need to be very careful not to victimize these men because they're finding their way, the way that we've had to find our way in the very same stuff. That's deep. That's so deep. it's oftentimes so it can be a little bit more difficult for them because, and I say that because they are at the table okay. with the rest of the world. And now for them to be trying to sort through these things, Everybody at the table is going to get them. We're not often at the table. Right, right. And if we are, no one knows. We're not going to say that. That's Nobody right. knows that we're there. That's so right. we're safe. But for him, it's all out on the table for him. So it's very important if he's going to have to get through this successfully, if he has to have some support somewhere. Right. Now, that doesn't take the, the onus off of him to stand up and to do some things, I'm sure. as And do his for. research. And Absolutely. do something. Because Lord Choose knows. carefully. This guy was very smart because he chose carefully. Right. I'm pretty sure he researched you for a while. Yes, he had. He had an opportunity. That, that's a, the beauty of where we are at technology age because now you get to see and yeah. watch it play out. And I can always see, well, had I seen Tone in some other unsavory situation mm -hmm. online, it's just right. everything. That way you can kind of play it out. Right. So, and make us as safe a bet as one could be. So, well, what do you recommend mm -hmm. to not just gentlemen who are watching, but also to women who are watching? I, my goal in this series is to affirm all of us. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. Right. My goal is also to raise these questions and to have these conversations about things that are kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. um, I've worked through those issues with you, other therapists, right. where I'm extremely comfortable. Right. In my skin, right? You know, um, I'm not flawless or perfect, or I, I don't, I'm not the one that breaks up the room, right. Right. And, and that's okay. Yeah, that's that's, that wasn't that's not the plan, and that, that wasn't, wasn't the, the goal in the transition right. at all. It well. was trying to understand what was going on deep inside of me, and now I'm sharing my life with someone else, and so I I, I want that love of who they are. Mm -hmm. um, uh, to, to permeate through me and also through you and and what do you recommend uh, when to 
people who are on this journey trying to figure out gender identity, sexual orientation, all of those things, what do you recommend to them if, if, if you were trying to sit down and think about something that you could say that mo the average person just has no clue about? I would first primarily, and this is no um, um, advertisement for uh, the mental health field, but actually it is, have a therapist. You need to have a counselor, a therapist, a mentor, somebody that can talk, because somebody that you can talk to. And I think there's a misunderstanding about Therapy mental health and therapy in general. That's you think true. that there's somebody telling it has you what to clin do. Clinical session yeah, or that, something. And I know a lot of us older generations have a very negative um, 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 uh, a remembrance or recollection of what clinical settings were like for people who were trans or even people who were GLBT yeah. because of the history of that. But that day is gone. Right. And I think that people have a misunderstanding about what therapy is and, and that what counseling can be like, what counseling should be. Should it's, be. Should right. be. Yeah. It's not a counselor or a professional, a mental health professional telling you what to do with your life. Mm -hmm. They are the sounding board mm -hmm. to let you get your stuff out mm -hmm. and to help you sort through your things mm -hmm. for you to make a decision. They don't give you That's right. a, a decision. Mm -hmm. They help you make a decision and then help you weigh the pros and cons of those things. Mm -hmm. That is very important. So that's that's your number that one. That is my number one thing is to have, have someone that you can just let it all out with. Mm -hmm. If you think that you mm -hmm. do not have need any it, issues. you probably are the person who needs it. <laughs> And, and I say that, you know, jokingly, it's right, a very comical right. thing, but it's very true because those of us who think that we don't have an issue are really not, and it's not the trans thing, but as you said earlier, because of the trans thing, you may have anxiety, mm -hmm. you may have depression. Mm -hmm. Likely, it is likely that most of us who are trans have some level of anxiety or depression. How could you not mm -hmm. when the entire world is trying to stone you to death? Right, right. Or at least it feels that way sometimes. Right, right, right. You may have um, some other mental health issues or some other behavioral issues, eating, um, substance use, mm -hmm. or spending, right. or, sex sex right. or sex abuse, all mm -hmm. these things, sex. right, exactly, those things that play the <laughs> things <laughs> out, those things oh, that Lord. play what, what, what is out, what's coming from the audience, <laughs> the wearing them on the way, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know that could be, you know, that may be, <laughs> that, that, is, that is, histrionic, yeah, the um, body dysmorphic this is the dish, um, issues that we've mm -hmm. talked about where people are doing the silicone and we're doing so many different things ourselves because of what we, our mind's eye tells us we should be or with someone else is telling all those things are that you're it's they're issues but they're not issues because you're trans right they are issues that will surround the fact that you're trans right, right. and you need to be able to work those things out and many people kind of ignore that there's nothing wrong with me I'm together well if you think that you're together you and I'm telling you as a mental health professional <laughs> I'm telling you as somebody who is old enough to know what's what right and who understands this probably better than just a little bit a little just bit a little better <laughs> than a lot of people let me say that right 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 and i am very happy that i've had a therapist me too i am extremely happy and you know my it's funny because a year after you and i stopped mm -hmm. um, talking and um, talking out my issues and different things as i it, the, my issues was becoming a public figure mm. and dealing with the denial whole level. that was a whole nother it the denial that you are, um, people do want to know what you think about things, how you feel about, they want to be a part of your world, mm -hmm. but I'm doing this as a transgender person. So there are two and worlds they're trying to get. That's apart. right. And I think that we are very harsh on our celebrities. Mm -hmm. You know, we're on every little thing that they say. You know, every They're little people. every little hair strand. Yeah. You know, but we people are people. We're, we're people, yeah. and uh, and everyone. You're not gonna agree with everything everyone says. Yeah. Got to wrap it up. Uh, we're not gonna agree with what everyone says or anything like that. But I, I would I would encourage people to learn to love. But you gotta start hurt people, hurt people. That's right. And you, you gotta, gotta learn within. to start from within. That's right. Thank you so much, Sydney, right. well, for coming and explaining anytime. this. Love it, love it, anything love it. you two ever want to um, say to my audience base, you know you got a platform Thank you right very here. Much. I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. This is Conversations with Tona Brown with Sydney Kimbrough. She just spreads love to us about how to love ourselves. Thank you so much.